Look at this. Almost there. Perfect. You. Where's the girl you took? I don't know nothing, honest. I'm new here. They don't tell me shit. Huh? Well, then you're useless to me. No way to go but up. Almost there. That'll do it. Die! You're done for, bitch! for bitch. Yeah! <laughs> 
done for, bitch. Almost there. Almost there. All right. Shit. Why am I bad? Nice. Let's see. Almost there. Nice. Stupid thing. All right. Almost there. Almost there. Let's see. That'll do it.
Oh, shit. Now, tell me what I want to know, or else. Where's Marase? Hell if I know. Probably with the girl. Yeah, probably. Where's the girl? She's up in the reception room. Got it. Appreciate the honesty. What's the code for the reception room? <laughs> like I tell you. I don't have time for your games. Understand? Now I'm gonna ask you again. What's the code to the reception room? One, three, seven, zero. Well, that wasn't so hard. Thanks. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Why am I this stupid thing? Almost there. All right. Nice. Almost, let's see. That'll do it. You're Seiya's sister, right? Don't worry. You're safe now. Yagami! When the hell did you get here? Let the girl go. Right now. What do you mean, let her go? The girl can leave whenever she wants. We don't have her tied up or nothing. I get it. It's all fine if you aren't keeping her captive, right? Just have to make her stay here until the trial's over. He really thought this one through. But that's not gonna work. Huh? 
Confinement is a crime, whether or not your captive is tied up, idiots. Shut your trap! You know, false imprisonment will get you between three months and seven years, maybe even longer if you hurt the victim. Guess you'll have to take a little dip in an acid bath then. No body, no crime. <laughs> Intimidation too? Tack on another year. You piece of... Come on! Let's make sure this asshole never talks again! Come on, let's make sure this asshole never talks again! Come on, let's make sure this asshole never talks again! Come <laughs> on. 
Come on. Not so fast, Yagami. Marasa-san, hasn't this gone on long enough? You're only gonna make things worse for yourself. Hamura has an alibi. Someone else clearly killed Kume. There's no reason for you to keep Seiya from testifying. But if Hamura didn't murder Kume, who did? I'm not sure, but Hamura might have an idea. He must have been working with the real murderer. What? The night of the crime, Kume went into Amor and just disappeared, right? He didn't contact you. Nobody saw him. He didn't even show up on any security footage. The way I see it, Kume never left Amor. In other words, Hamra must have handed him over to the real murderer. While Hamra was at the sauna making an alibi for himself, someone else was murdering Kume and gouging his eyes out. It almost makes sense. If Hamura ends up behind bars, I'll never be able to prove that theory. So what? You want to let Hamura walk? Better that than threaten a girl to stop someone from testifying. Besides, I thought you were above shit like this. <laughs> All right, just get out of here. You got guts for a detective. Huh. <laughs> Thanks. Hamura-san is the one punching me in this video. The same man standing here today. I remember now. There's no doubt in my mind. So, you retract your earlier statement? Yes. My apologies. Your Honor, clearly this witness has no credibility. How does the defense respond? I admit, the witness was shaken up before. But I believe that's a perfectly understandable response. This is his first time in court, after all. I have no doubts regarding his credibility. This Stardust establishment. It's a host club, yes? How long have you been employed there? About two years. For that short a time frame, you seem to have an awful lot of trouble with your customers. Huh? I'm not sure what you mean. Several of them have approached you in hopes of marriage, have they not? They come spending huge sums of cash, so you act like you're ready to seal the deal. You say whatever it takes to make them happy in the moment, but your story changes once things start to get real. Five women have filed reports with the Consumer Affairs Bureau, and those are just the ones who have stepped forward. Can we really trust the words of such a manipulative man? With these character traits in mind, I sincerely doubt the credibility of the witness's testimony. And if the witness is indeed lying, the defendant's alibi is invalid. That is all. How does the defense respond? I'd like to continue on the topic of credibility. Mind if I ask you a few questions, prosecutor? Go ahead. First, allow me to fast forward the security footage to just a few days after the crime. Oddly enough, we'll be looking at the exact day the prosecution filed their suit. Mm hmm. Isn't that you, prosecutor? Uh, yes. And in this footage, you're reenacting the altercation that took place between the defendant and our witness, yes? What? No. Well, that's strange. You stated earlier that you hadn't seen any footage from the camera near the sauna. But then, how would you be able to reenact things exactly as they went down? You also claimed you did not inspect the area yourself. 
But it seems that wasn't the truth. Why are you hiding the truth from us, prosecutor? <laughs> You're wrong! As you can see, the original footage isn't exactly clear. I would understand if you would deny that the defendant was the man who punched our witness. But instead, you claimed you hadn't seen the footage at all. If I had to guess, when you first saw the footage, you realized Hamra might have been the other man. At the very least, you couldn't rule out the possibility. So you lied, I would say. <laughs> that, that's not true. Can we be sure that what you say is credible? You've already lied outright in a court of law. And unfortunately for you, there's only one person who thinks the defendant is guilty. And that's you, prosecutor. The night Kume got murdered, Hamura was holed up in Sauna Goten till morning. The footage from the security camera Hamra's alibi, Seiya's testimony, it all lined up. With a story that airtight, there's no chance he could have killed Kume. We find the defendant, Kyohei Hamra, innocent. I will now clarify the reasoning behind this decision. Defendant, please be seated. The judge was right. Hamura definitely didn't kill Kume. But he had to have been involved. Meanwhile, the real killer is still out there, hiding in the shadows of Kamurocho. Murdering Yakuza, gouging their eyes out, retreating into his den. So, I've given him a name, the Mole. A lawyer's job is done once he proves the defendant innocent. But me, I'm not a lawyer, not anymore. Meaning my search for the truth only ends when I say it does. My office might be small, but that doesn't mean I don't have a reputation to uphold. In other words, I'll do whatever it takes to bring Hamura and the Mole down. Yagami-san, nice seeing you. Gorgeous day. How's the detective business been treating you lately? Yeah, I knew you'd show up here, Hattori. Listen, I'm not in the mood for your shit today. Ah, but it's my journalistic duty to hear what you have to say. It's not personal, just trying to do my job, okay? I've already seen what your so-called job produces. A fraudulent lawyer lets a murderer walk. Helpless girl suffers the consequences. <laughs> you and I both know. You're the only reason the girl died. You just had to go and set that killer free, didn't you? And the good people who raised her still suffer for it. You can't be coming back now. What would her poor family have to say to that, huh, Yagami-san? No need to worry about that. If you say so. Hmm. See you around, then. <laughs> 